Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for November 5th, 2021. Uh, I'm going to begin with a, a short uh, update from the Glasgow Climate Summit. There was an important acknowledgement yesterday by Prince Charles who said that we are now on a warlike mobilization behind the Green New Deal policy. Now this is a policy which Charles has adopted as his own uh, because it's for radical depopulation. It's using the environment as an issue to enforce the destruction of modern society. And this is the outlook of the European oligarchy, which has now been adopted by leading elements inside the United States tied to the city of London and Wall Street. Now, Carney, the former uh, director of the Bank of England, or governor of the Bank of England, who is presiding over much of the global organization behind the climate summit, uh, along with Michael Bloomberg, who he announced as his co-partner in coordinating the Glasgow uh, Finance Alliance for Net Zero, uh, along with Larry Fink from BlackRock, all of them announced that the agreement that they've made behind this, this uh, financial operation, GFANS, uh, Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, that this is an agreement to cut off all new investment in fossil fuels. They're explicit about this. Now, that's already happening. 90% of the new electricity production plants in 2020 and 2021 were connected to wind parks and solar farms. In other words, no coal, no nuclear, no fossil fuel. They've already shifted into that direction. And what uh, I, I believe it was Carney, uh, Carney said in this announcement yesterday that what they want, the banks in this alliance, want, quote, a wholesale rewiring of the global financial system. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me say that again, a wholesale rewiring of the global financial system so that every financial de decision takes climate into account, unquote. Now, what does this mean? This is the direct link between the Green New Deal and the Great Reset. The issue is how to use fake environmentalism to impose a Shaktian global economic policy. That is an austerity policy which starves the physical economy, uh, creates new financial bubbles, in this case a green bubble, at the expense of the standard of living of 95% of the world's population. The beneficiaries will be the 1% at the top and those people who serve them, especially, for example, in media and certain corporate interests. But the desire is, or the, the intent is to use these fake environmental issues to force submission of all nations to giving up their sovereignty for the sake of, of economic policies that will kill off their populations. That's what Glasgow is about. Now, let me take up some of your questions because there were some very good questions today and unfortunately I don't have time for all of them. But I was asked about the update I did on Wednesday about the election in Virginia and New Jersey uh, someone wrote and said, is Youngkin, the new governor of Virginia, a Bush Republican? Well, interestingly enough, perhaps this is why he did not fully embrace Donald Trump. Uh, Trump endorsed him, but stayed out of the state and then declared it a victory for himself and, and his movement. But Youngkin himself has a long history of connection to the Bush financial networks, including Wall Street banks, uh, including the military-industrial complex. He went to work for the Carlyle Group, which uh, has the connections to the Bush political machine and financial machine, Wall Street firms, and, and so on. But also, importantly, he worked in, in arranging mergers and buyouts, especially of defense-related corporations. The Carlyle Group, at its heart, is part of this collection of consultants, financiers, and uh, defense networks that are at the heart of the military-industrial complex. This is something that Donald Trump has 
made a major target of his attacks, especially when he ran against Jeb Bush and the Bush machine, against people like McCain, uh, against Biden. So it's ironic, isn't it, that they're declaring a victory of someone who comes from this machine as their own victory. Now, in reality, what it shows is the absolute contempt that whole and growing sectors of the population have for the policies associated with the Democratic Party. That is the so-called social policies around gender and race, but also around things such as the Green New Deal and the phony infrastructure plan. Now, here's the big challenge to Republicans. If in fact, Youngkin's governs as a Bush rhino. What's his policy going to be? It's going to be the same as we've seen from the Republican Party around Mitch McConnell, and in the past, Paul Ryan, of obstructing any investment in the physical economy and continuing the flow of funds into Wall Street. So this is not a victory for the American people. It's a, what it should be a wake-up call politically that no politician can run on the idea of business as usual. And of course, the disruption that was caused, the, the, the positive disruption caused by the election of Donald Trump in 2016 uh, is still there as a reality. The people who back Trump are still unhappy for good reasons. The economy is still dominated by a, a small group of oligarchs who care only for their own benefit and for the continuation of the policies of the military-industrial complex. So the real issue ahead coming out of Virginia and New Jersey and, and into 2022 is not just the failure of the Biden administration to enact any of its economic policies, which by the way are almost all bad. They're Green New Deal, they're based on uh, restructuring uh, to an accommodation with the global trade system, which is the World Trade Organization uh, free trade policy, they're all bad. The question is, is there a viable alternative to that coming within the political system? In his campaign in 2016, Donald Trump represented an alternative, and in his first couple of years in office, tried to fight for that alternative. But increasingly, that was lost. We hear nothing of Glass-Steagall, nothing of an attack on the oligopoly that control financial policy. So the upcoming elections are going to be determined much more at this point by the outpouring of anger against the establishment than a coherent uh, solution. That's why the LaRouche Four Laws and our movement is so important to bring in a real change, a real transformation. Uh, you want to make America great? We have to go back to the real American system as defined by Lyndon LaRouche, which means Glass-Steagall, it means national banking policy, uh, and it means investment in infrastructure, and in particular at the front ends of technology. So I think the implication of the election in Virginia is not Trump versus Biden, but a uh, rejection of the Biden Democratic Party without this being an embrace of what Youngkins represents because no one really knows what he represents. Now, second question on what's going on with the Federal Reserve and interest rates. Jerome Powell said, well, we're going to do tapering. This has been a long time coming. Tapering basically means the Fed is not going to keep buying bonds uh, and pumping money directly into the system by purchasing these kinds of financial instruments. However, they're not going to stop the flow of money or the direction of that flow into the speculative system because that's where the returns are and that's where the bubble is and that's what the banks are depending on. So this is a bit of a placeholder statement. Look, they have to do something because inflation is out of control. We were told repeatedly by Powell and his spokesman that it's a transitory inflation, inflation, a temporary inflation. It's not going to be permanent. Then Janet Yellen a, a week ago said, well, it may be a little more permanent, at least two years, a sustained inflation. Others are saying three to five years. But what does that mean? How many of you can survive 
if you have an annual inflation rate of 10 to 20 percent. We're told it's 5 percent right now. That's a bunch of bunk. Key indices such as uh, energy and uh, food are growing in double digits. Uh, in, in Germany, for example, utility rates are expected to jump 14 percent in November alone. So this is not transitory inflation. This is a, an effect of the flow, the huge pumping of money into a financial system which is already full of unsustainable debt. Now, giving more money to debtors to cover interest on the old debt is not a policy for a recovery, nor is building a new bubble a solution. The solution is physical economic policy. It's LaRouche's idea that you create new wealth through investing in research and development and science and technology, and, and not in saying that we have to cut back on those areas because it's too expensive. Furthermore, if you leave it to the private sector, which is what the Glasgow model is, since they say governments don't have money, it's got to be the private sector with $130 trillion floating around out there that has to invest it. That money's not going into mom and pop stores or into new industries or into research and development. It's going into new bubbles. So, and the second part of that is governments can create credit. The problem is they're creating money right now to back up worthless financial instruments instead of a directed flow of investment into real physical wealth production. So what is Powell doing? He doesn't have slight, the slightest idea. All the discussion around the economy is shaped by neoliberal policies that are aiming at a Shaktian world order, that is a global banker's dictatorship, which will tell governments what they can spend money on and what they can't. And they're not going to spend money to improve your health care system, your roads, your bridges, your transportation, your education system. They're going to spend money to keep the, the bubble going. And so whatever Jerome Powell thinks he's doing, essentially what we do know is that some of the leading figures in the Federal Reserve, including Powell himself, are suspected of using their positions for self-enrichment. Why should that be surprising? when the whole mantra of the last 30 years is greed is good, greed drives the economy. So what I think is going on is, is a bunch of fakery to cover up the failure uh, or the inability of their policy to provide for the needs of the vast majority of the population. Finally, just very briefly, what are the implications of China uh, unveiling their hypersonic missile in a test a couple weeks ago? <clears throat> well, the implications are quite profound for the United States. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Milley, said he's not quite sure if this is a Sputnik moment, but it could be. We're watching it. Well, a Sputnik moment is what? 1957, when the Russians leapfrogged past the United States, the Soviets did, with the launching of the satellite, uh, the Sputnik. So... That led to a rush in the United States to invest in uh, weapons technology, but also in science. The National Defense Education Act was a product of that. And many people were given fellowships to study, especially in science and technology, as a result of that. Now, if the idea is that we have to counter the hypersonic missile of China with American hypersonic missiles, well, we're already behind. We've had some tests that failed. We've been spending a lot of time and money on it. But what would be the effect if we got a similar system? A continuation of the arms race. Why not have a dialogue on how to spend money that can solve the real problems of mankind? The real problems we face are not whether or not China is going to invade Taiwan or, or Russia is going to overrun the Baltic states. The real problems we face are a global pandemic, food shortages, energy shortages, which are created by bad economic policies. The alternative is investment policies in the physical economy that produce real wealth that are used not only to uh, protect the standard of living in the advanced countries, but to uplift 
people living in the developing countries by leapfrogging into new areas of technology as opposed to going backwards into dark age technologies such as burning, um, burning biomass, trees, and things of that sort to stay alive. So the real lesson of the hypersonic missile test is are we going to succumb to this idea that we're now in a new arms race? Or can we have a mature, rational dialogue about instead using investment in new technologies for such things as developing nuclear fusion power, colonizing space, ending disease, curing cancer? That's what a sane human race would do. And we need your support in this. We need your willingness to mobilize with us around a program that can do this. So spend some time over the weekend at the Schiller Institute site, at the LaRouche Organization site. Join us in this fight to not just defeat the insanity of the oligarchy, but to replace it with a vision of man which is based on the image of man as a creative being in the image and likeness of God the Creator. That's the direction we have to go in, and governments should play a role in encouraging that as opposed to attacking that. Thanks for joining me today. Have a productive weekend, and I'll see you again on Monday.